Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I personally wrestle with with regard to the faith, and today we'll look at how Christians are supposed to treat their enemies by looking at the verses that touch on this topic directly. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that persecute and calumniate you that you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven, who maketh his Son to rise upon the good and bad, and reigneth upon the just and the unjust. Matthew 5, 44-45 These verses don't say that we should love evil, and they certainly don't say that we should assist evildoers in their evil doing. They only say that we should do good for those who do evil. These verses also don't say that we should do this as practice, or because it's a skill we'll need in heaven. Instead, they say we should do it because it will make us more like God. This increases our chances of reaching heaven and escaping from these evils. However, what kinds of good should we do to our enemies? Be at agreement with thy adversary betimes, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest perhaps the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Matthew 5.25 This verse uses the word adversary, but not to refer to the adversary, Satan. The practice of delivering people to judges and officers is a distinctly human one, so this must refer to human adversaries. Obviously, it doesn't mean people who oppose the will of God or are enemies of Jesus. We're not supposed to be agreeing with them. In any case, they're not strictly our adversaries so much as adversaries of God. The key word in this verse is thy, thy adversary, an enemy of yourself, and not because of your religious beliefs. In short, this verse refers to personal conflicts between individual people. Jesus says that we should try to make peace with those people to avoid being punished for issues that matter a lot less than the divine will. We shouldn't let petty rivalries and disputes about property, respect, companionship, and so on distract us from what's really important, the will of God. But is there any part of the Bible that specifically talks about how to deal with people who act to harm us? But if thy brother shall offend against thee, go, and rebuke him between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou shalt gain thy brother. Matthew 18.15 Offend against means commit an offense against. In short, it implies some sort of personal slight or crime, not just saying or doing something that makes us feel offended. Jesus says we should try to express our concerns to see if they listen to us. If so, all well and good. If not, and if he will not hear thee, take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may stand. Matthew 18.16 Sometimes people will do or say something to you in private that they won't do or say in public. Or if they do slash say it in public, they might lose the respect of the people around them in some way. This step may encourage some people to go back on rash judgments and belligerent or disruptive behavior. However, in certain cases, that doesn't work. And in those cases, if he will not hear them, tell the church. And if he will not hear the church, let him be to thee as the heathen and publican. Matthew 18.17 If a person is so eager to commit a slight or crime against you that he doesn't care about your feelings, public opinion, Christian peace, or even the judgments of the church itself, there's no reason why you should continue associating with them. However, you should do your best to maintain peace between fellow Christians and treat this only as a last resort. Incidentally, however, this again applies only to fellow Christians. The phrase, let him be to thee as the heathen and publican, implies that the people Jesus is talking about weren't already heathens, people belonging to pagan religions, or publicans, tax collectors, before this. So again, these are enemies for less substantial reasons. So we should do our best to maintain peace between Christians, but not be afraid to break off contact with a person who's really hostile towards you. And speaking of Christian peace, next, what is Christian peace? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.